Hello, I am Lakshman Maheshwari and today we will talk about important environmental initiatives, conferences and agreements. Let us start with the Rio Summit. It was officially known as the United Nations Conference on Environment and Development, UNCED, also known as Rio de Janeiro Earth Summit, Rio Summit, the Rio Conference or the Earth Summit. It is a major United Nations conference held in Rio from 3rd to 14 June 1992. The key issues addressed were systematic scrutiny of patterns of production and it entailed production of toxic components such as lead in gasoline or poisonous waste including radioactive chemicals. The next was alternative sources of energy to replace the use of fossil fuels new reliance on public transportation system to reduce vehicular emissions, congestion in cities and the health problems caused by polluted air and smoke and lastly the growing usage and limited supply of water. A product of the Earth Summit was the Agenda 21. It is a non-binding action plan of the United Nations with regards to sustainable development. The action agenda for the UN other multilateral organizations and individual governments around the world that can be executed at local, national and global levels. Next, let's talk about Green Cross International. It is a global, independent, non-profit and non-governmental environmental organization working to address the interconnected global challenges of security, poverty eradication and environmental degradation. It was founded by former Soviet Union President and Nobel Prize winner Mikhail Gorbachev in 1993. It was also based on the 1992 Earth Summit in Rio and is headquartered in Geneva. Now let us talk about United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change also known as UNFCCC. It is an international environmental treaty which was adopted on 9th May 1992. It was opened for signature at the Earth Summit in Rio and it entered into force on 21st March 1994. As of December 2015, it has 197 parties. It met annually from 1995 in conferences of the parties or COP to assess progress in dealing with with climate change. The objectives of UNFCCC are to stabilize greenhouse gas concentrations in the atmosphere at a level that would prevent dangerous anthropogenic interferences with the climate system. It sets non-binding limits on greenhouse gas emissions for individual countries and it contains no enforcement mechanisms. Next, we will talk about the Kyoto Protocol. It is an international treaty which extends the 1992 United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change. It was adopted in Kyoto, Japan on December 11, 1997 and entered into force on February 16, 2005. It implemented the objective of the UNFCCC to fight global warming by reducing greenhouse gas concentrations in the atmosphere. There is a scientific consensus that Global warming is occurring and it is extremely likely that human-made CO2 emissions have predominantly caused it. Now let us talk about a very important concept called principle of common but differentiated responsibilities. This puts the obligation to reduce current emissions on developed countries on the basis that they are historically responsible for the current levels of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. So let us talk about the Kyoto Protocol events. First commitment period started in 2008 and ended in 2012. The targets applied to the four greenhouse gases namely carbon dioxide, methane, nitrous oxide, sulfur hexafluoride and two groups of gases hydrofluorocarbons and perfluorocarbons. The second commitment period was agreed on in 2012. It was also known as 
the Doha Amendment. As of July 2016, 66 states have accepted the Doha Amendment. Doha Amendment's entry into force required the acceptance of 144 states. Now we will talk about the Earth Summit 2002, informally nicknamed as Rio Plus 10. It was the World Summit on Sustainable Development. It took place in Johannesburg, South Africa from 26th August to 4th September 2002. In here, the Johannesburg Declaration was signed with the aim to restore the world's depleted fisheries by 2015. The absence of the United States rendered the summit partially important as George W. Bush boycotted it. Next, let us talk about the Copenhagen Summit. It was the 2009 United Nations Climate Change Conference which was held at the Bella Center in Copenhagen, Denmark between 7th and 18th December. It included the 15th Conference of the Party, COP15, to the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change and the 5th meeting of the party's MOP5 to the Kyoto Protocol. The Bali Roadmap was finalized here, which is a framework for climate change mitigation beyond 2012. On Friday, 18 December, the final day of the conference, international media reported that the climate talks were in disarray. There was weak political will. Let us have a look at the performance of Copenhagen Summit. The Copenhagen Accord was drafted by United States, China, India, Brazil and South Africa. It was taken note of but not adopted and did not pass unanimously. It recognized that climate change is one of the greatest challenges of the present day and that action should be taken to keep any temperature increase below 2 degrees Celsius. It is not legally binding and does not contain any legally binding commitment for reducing CO2 emissions. Rio Plus 20 or officially the United Nations Conference on Sustainable Development also nicknamed as Rio 2012 Rio Plus 20 or Earth Summit 2012. This was the third international conference on sustainable development and the aim was reconciling the economic and environmental goals of the global community. It is a 20-year follow-up to the 1992 Earth Summit United Nations Conference on Environment and Development. It was the 10th anniversary of the 2002 World Summit on Sustainable Development in Johannesburg. It was a high-level conference including heads of state. The three main objectives of Rio Plus 20 were securing renewed political commitment for sustainable development, assessing the progress and implementation gaps in meeting previous commitments and addressing new and emerging challenges. Now let us talk about the Paris Agreement also known as Paris Climate Accord or Paris Climate Agreement. It is an agreement within the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change. It deals with greenhouse gas emission mitigation, adaptation and finance starting in the year 2020. It was negotiated at the 21st Conference of Parties of UNFCCC in Paris. It was adopted by consensus on 12th December 2015 and as of November 2017, 195 UNFCCC members have signed the agreement. The goal is keeping global temperature rise in this century well below 2 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial level and to pursue efforts to limit the temperature increase even further to 1.5 degrees Celsius. Talking about the performance of Paris Agreement, there is no mechanism to force a country to set a specific target by a specific date. Further, in June 2017, US President Donald Trump announced his intention to withdraw United States from the agreement. This led to widespread condemnation both internationally and domestically. Earliest effective date of withdrawal for the US is November 2020, shortly before the end of President Trump's first term. 
in July 2017, France's Environment Minister Nicolas Hewlett announced France's five-year plan to ban all petrol and diesel vehicles by 2040. France would no longer use coal to produce electricity after 2022. Now let us talk about intended nationally determined contributions. This is a term used under United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change for reduction in greenhouse gas emissions. It's a compromise between quantified emissions, limitations and reduction objectives and nationally appropriate mitigation actions. The first greenhouse gas targets under UNFCCC that applied equally to both developed and developing countries. Countries put forward their agreements in the context of their own national circumstances, capabilities and priorities within the ambition to reduce global greenhouse gas emission enough to keep global temperature rise to 2 degrees Celsius. Talking about India's stand, India submitted its intended nationally determined contribution to the UNFCCC in October 2015, committing to cut the emissions intensity of GDP by 33 to 35 percent by 2030 from 2005 levels. For this, India needs at least 2.5 trillion dollars to achieve its 2015-2030 goals. A concept increasingly becoming popular is Think globally, act locally. Think global, act local is used in various contexts including planning, environment, education, mathematics and business. It urges people to consider the health of the entire planet and to take action in their own communities and cities at grassroots levels. It occurs on a local level and are primarily run by volunteers and helpers. It is now a global concept with high importance and is a balance between global philosophy and local practices and culture. A new kind of politics quickly emerging is the green politics also known as eco-politics. It is the political ideology that aims to create an ecologically sustainable society rooted in environmentalism, non-violence, social justice and grassroots democracy. It began taking shape in the Western world in the 1970s. It has developed and established itself in many countries around the globe and has had achieved some electoral success. The term was used initially in relation to Die Guren or German for Greens, a Green Party formed in the late 1970s. Topics such as degradation, marginalization, environmental conflict, conservation, control, environmental identities, social movements, feminism, civil liberties, variation of localism and social progressivism are part of green politics. It is largely considered left in the political spectrum. A very important event held annually is the Earth Day. It is a global event each year with more than 1 billion people in 192 countries taking part. It is the largest civic focused day of action in the world. It brings climate and environmental literacy to the world. People march, sign petitions, meet with their elected officials, plant trees, clean up their towns and roads and the corporations and governments make pledges and announce sustainable measures. The concept of sustainable development, green economy, creating green technology and jobs and promoting policy reforms at all levels of government are sought. The Earth's Day's 50th anniversary will be in the year 2020. This video covered important environmental initiatives, conferences and agreements and was brought to you by Lakshman Maheshwari. Please like, subscribe and share to keep receiving important updates. Thank you and have a good day.